Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you guys are having a great day. It is uh, about 2.30 on a Tuesday, and it's been a little bit of a time since we've chatted. So uh, we got a comment today uh, from a new member, Ed Holleran, um, and I'm going to bring up his uh, comment here um, about head mice, and let me kind of show you what we're going to start with here today. So, all right, so Ed Holleran um, joined us, I think yesterday or the day before, but he actually posted first on uh, Adafruit. So he posted on Adafruit's forums and asked a question about uh, making a head mouse. I guess he uses a head mouse uh, to control his computer, and uh, the one he has is broken and they're out of business and he's looking for a, a solution. And so I've actually recently done some of this stuff. Uh, I recently didn't really intend to make head mice, but I kind of did. And so I've learned um, a bit about what's easy um, and what's powerful in this space. And so I thought I would share this. If you're around and you want to uh, chat, make sure you say hi in the, the Facebook comments and uh, I will watch for them. Uh, I have learned that if I, don't, uh, if I don't say hi in the beginning, I never see you. So I did that. So hopefully that will work. Um, but Ed, Ed basically went to the Adafruit um, comment section or the forum, and uh, so Adafruit is one of our partners. So you guys have heard me talk about them before. They make most of the electronic parts we use, and he asked about making a, a hands-free mouse, and um, somebody referred them to me, and, and he's actually, I think, reached out to me on Discord as well. Uh, hopefully, this will answer his questions, but if not, you, you can always contact me directly. Um, but they basically said, you know, you've got you, you've got a, um, a circuit playground is a great option. We're going to talk about that. But you need something that will track how you're moving your head. Uh, and really, we're getting away from um, we're getting away from the idea of like tracking a dot uh, or something like that. We're we're going to uh, what's sometimes called an IMU or an immersion motion unit uh, that will track positioning and orientation. So. Let me, let me show you real quick kind of what I think Ed thinks he wants. And it might be what you want, okay? Uh, but uh, uh, I, I basically made one of these when we were playing with the, um, the XACs, the Xbox Adaptive Controllers. And I think this is basically the idea that, that Ed has, which is he's going to take a Circuit Playground Express, which is an inexpensive prototyping board from Adafruit, which actually has an IMU on it. Uh, he's going to put it on a hat, which I have an enormous head, but uh, once it's on the hat and kind of taped or glued on here evenly, um, this will absolutely work, right? So if he looks up and down, uh, this thing will tilt up and down, and it will, uh, it, will, it will basically move the mouse up and down. And then if he tips his head like this, uh, it will move left and right. And what I want to make sure everybody understands is that it's not going to work if you go like this, okay? So I want to talk a little bit about what your options are when you're using IMUs uh, or other orientation sensing devices. And I thought this is a good opportunity to kind of kind of talk through it. Um, so it, with a little bit of uh, serious geek stuff going on here, we're going to talk about accelerometers, gyroscopes, uh, magnetometers, and things like that to kind of explain uh, what these things are and what you can do with them. Okay. Uh, none of them are expensive, or, or not significant. None of them are AT expensive, and um, and we'll kind of talk through them at, at length here. So, uh, in order to do like the the easiest thing um, possible to make this uh, to make a head mouse, you would take one of these devices right here. Uh, so this has got a um, this is a Circuit Playground Express. It is a prototyping board. Uh, it has on it a what's called an M0 processor. Uh, which is a it's a Atmel chip. It's a microcontroller. You can write software in Python or in uh, Arduino in C uh, to run on here. Uh, and this chip can emulate a mouse very easily. Uh, quite literally, you import a mouse library and it becomes it looks to your computer, right? So the other end of this cord looks makes it look like it is a mouse. When you plug it in Windows or Mac or whatever, we'll see something that looks just like a mouse, okay? If you program it that way. And all the programs are out there and available for you to copy. Um, once you've decided 
you want to turn this into a mouse, you've got lots of options, right? Like every one of these pads is a capacitive touch, or eight of them are capacitive touch uh, things, so you can touch them. You've got two buttons if you want to. Um, you've got um, a light sensor, a, a sound sensor on here, a speaker on here. And some of those things are really important, even if you're not going to use them for activation. Like the, the fact that it's got a, a uh, speaker built in means you can get it to give you feedback. Like if you get it to click, you can make it, you can make it actually beep when you're clicking. Um, you can use uh, the lights on here as feedback for how far tilted you are, how far off you are from the center. You can use the buttons for, you know, when you click the button, it's going to recenter uh, the orientation, which we'll probably talk about in a little bit. Um, you do need to plug it into USB to make it work. Uh, any standard micro USB cord will work. And these are, these are fabulous tools if you're going to make uh, a head mouse. Okay, I don't want you for a minute to think this isn't a great option. It is. What you have to realize is that the sensor that's on here, and I will, I'm going to zoom in closer for a second here and try and get it to focus. All right, so the, um, the sensor that's on here is only, so it is only an accelerometer, okay? Uh, and if you look very right in the center, there's a little, let me make this a little brighter so you can see it better. If you look carefully, you'll see where it says uh, X, Y, and Z. So the circle means that Z is straight up and X is this axis and Y is this axis, okay? And so let's talk a little bit about what accelerometers do. Uh, so what an accelerometer does is, is, really, is really simple. Uh, the accelerometer knows which way down is. And so if you, make, if you think of um, this axis here being straight up and down, it knows which way down is. And that's really the only thing the accelerometer knows is which way is the center of the earth. That's, that's what an accelerometer does. And if you ask it, X, Y, and Z, which way is the center of the earth, uh, it will be able to tell you things like, um, did you tilt it this way? Or did you tilt it this way, right? Sorry, this way, okay? So, um, and it looks like it's got some blue on there. So, um, so, that's what it really does. It, it detects which way is down, and it will tell your program that. So if what, you, what you're trying to do is, um, for example, left and right is when I tilt it this way, and up and down is when I tilt it this way, it will totally work. Because if you think about the, the axis, the, the point that's going straight down towards gravity, um, when you tip it, you can tell that. If what you're trying to do, however, is to, to get it to do when you do this, when you, when you rotate, right, this way, or if you think about my head, if you want it to activate when you turn your head this direction, that has nothing to do with the gravity, uh, with the direction of the Earth, right? Uh, you're basically spinning like a top. This thing will not detect that. So accelerometers can detect um, basically how much you've tilted but not what direction you're facing, okay? Um, and that might be enough. So if you're, if you're thinking about, you know, using a hat and you're okay with the fact, I'll leave that off for a second, uh, but you're okay with uh, this is up and down, but this is left and right, um, accelerometer will totally work. And if that's, if, that's what you, um, if that's what you're comfortable with, if it's gonna work for you, it's gonna be super easy. There's no soldering involved. It's all built into that one chip. You buy the one chip and it, you programming it, program it and it will just work. In fact, it's even got nice easy, easy ways if you want to um, sew it onto the cap. It's got these nice big holes and stuff. Uh, so this will totally work. In fact, the, the code for this is exactly the same as the steering wheel thing I made for the, um, uh, for the XAC, except for instead of telling the joystick to move up, down, left, and right, you'd be telling a mouse to move up, down, left, and right. So it is not a significant, it's not a significant change, okay? Um, there is another option, and it's one that, that I really, I really kind of like. I made these, and we have a video about them on uh, the XAC list that we made. Uh, hi, Chris, how are you doing? So um, this is a pair of glasses I made, um, it doesn't use a circuit playground. It uses two other chips by Adafruit. Um, it uses a, uh, an itsy-bitsy, which is a small device of theirs. 
uh, and it uses a device called a BNO055, uh, which is an orientation sensor. And it, there is a difference between these, between this and what we were doing before. Um, so let me show you over the screen kind of what this looks like. All right. So, um, so this is an old pair of sunglasses that I had laying around. And what I, what I basically did was on the side here, I took a very small microcontroller right here. Uh, called an itsy bitsy and I just kind of um, strapped it onto the side and then I took four wires and I ran them over to another sensor which is the orientation sensor and so this sensor is different than the accelerometer th that is on the um, on the the circuit playground in that in addition to having an accelerometer it does have an accelerometer it has two other sensors built into it okay uh, it has a, uh, a gyroscope and it has a magnetometer. And so what those two sensors do is the gyroscope can tell if you're moving um, relative to yourself. In other words, if there's motion going on, it, it can detect that. Uh, and the other thing can tell you which way north is. So rather than which way the center of the earth is, it can tell you which way north is, where the, where the magnetic field is from, from the North Pole. So it's basically a compass. So you have a compass, you have a pointer to the bottom of, uh, of the center of the earth, and you have a sensor that tells you whether or not you're moving. And what's really neat about this device is that it will combine all that data for you. And it will basically tell you which direction you're looking. So whether that's, um, and let me kind of uh, do this with a, a prop, right? So if you think about this uh, as, a, as which direction I'm facing, right? So if I look up, it can tell. If I look down, it can tell, right? If I tilt, it can tell. If I turn, it can tell. So it literally, it literally can tell which direction it is facing in all of the axes. It's called sometimes called a nine off, a nine degree of freedom. Um, but this one is actually a little bit different than just a standard nine off. This is actually uh, called an ori an absolute orientation sensor, and what it means is it's going to tell you everything about where you're looking right so uh, you're looking south your head is even with the ground and you're looking uh, you're you're level with the ground and you're looking up right or you you've turned your head it can tell all of it. it can completely tell which direction you're looking and the reason that this is important is that uh, what it lets you do is first it's actually smaller than the hat and it's easier to wear but once you center it up and down works but so do left and right right so if you want to if you want to move your mouse to the left you just you just move your head to the left and the right and I think this is a much more natural way um, to move a mouse you also get the benefit that you have degrees of, of sensation that you're not using right so if you wanted to you could do tips as clicks right so you could tip your head to click the mouse tip it the other direction to right click the mouse or 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 grab and let go or things like that. Um, now this isn't built into one uh, device. Like I said, I had to do some, some really basic wiring here. Uh, four wires had to be soldered together and then we strapped it onto the glasses. But honestly, I like this one. So when I, when I wear this one, about my only problem is um, I have it to, I have it, um, I have a delay that if you stay still for over a second, it will reset that as the center. And that's just a bug. That should be like three seconds. It should be much longer because sometimes you'll be looking to the right and suddenly that becomes straight and, and then you're, you're kind of screwed. So um, there, are some, there are some tricks with that that we are working on, uh, but this is completely doable. So the, the other problem with um, the, the absolute orientation sensor uh, is the cost. So Circuit Playground Express is $25 all in. You've got everything built onto one board. Um, the absolute orientation sensor by itself is $35 just for the sensor. But I will tell you, if you're thinking about doing it with a, a less expensive nine off or something like just an accelerometer and you're going to manually do all that math, this one just works. And the $10 or $20 it's going to cost you is absolutely worth the time it's going to spend debugging all of the code to try and figure it out yourself. Okay. This does all of the, the math for you. In other words, it, it, 
it combines which way is down, which way is north, and are you moving, and gives you the answer, what direction are you looking, okay? Uh, but it's $35, and then you still need a microcontroller, and the least expensive of those at this point uh, is probably the Trinket M0, uh, which is about nine bucks. So you could, I, this, this one's made with an itsy bitsy, which is 15, but you don't need that. Um, I just happen to have one. So you could make this for $9 plus the $35 uh, IMU, four wires and some software. And the other nice thing is I forget it's on, right? I never forget that a hat is on, it screws up your hair. Uh, and this one, you, you can completely forget, even with a wire on it, right? So I'll, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like with a USB plug on it. So the plug goes in here, um, like that. And then, yeah, so the, the, you know, the wire's back behind your ear, and, and it's, just, it's just not an issue, right? You can even run it up, out the back. And this totally worked. This was, so when I was at um, ATIA for, uh, when I was at ATIA and I showed this, uh, it was a huge hit. So we had people who used head mice, could just pop these on and control the Xbox, and it, it was a, an absolute hit. Um, I can show you quickly kind of how to, how to do this. Um, in the, I think I posted the um, the version of it for uh, Circuit Playground in that forum post. But I think I might just keep this as a short video. Uh, so Ed, if you'd like to, um, if you'd like me to help you get that code working, let me know which drive. If you want to test with the Circuit Circuit Play uh, Circuit Playground first, uh, I'll be happy to do that. And it's easy. And I think actually I sent you a lot of the um, the code that would get you most of the way there. Uh, I, I will tell you that if you're going to use a circuit playground, use their helper libraries because what ends up happening is if you use the direct code to get access to the accelerometer, you have to tell the, the circuit playground not to initialize itself because otherwise you'll have conflicts. So just use the sample library. You literally say CPX dot, you know, I'll, I'll show the code here for people. It's really not complicated code. So, um, Here, so so like this right here is the. Let's see if I can show this. Yeah, so this is the code for how to basically make this work. Um, yeah, I'll turn off my head. Get out of here for a second. Okay, so basically you say um, you want to access the. Oh, th this is what you did. Sorry, where's my? Here you go. So here's the example that uses the circuit playground accelerometer. I zoom back in again. Okay, so it says I'm going to use the time library and then from the Circuit Playground Express library import CPX and that's the name of the Circuit Playground Express object and then forever while true grab the X Y and Z acceleration uh, from the from this object print it out and sleep and instead of printing it out here what you would do is you would do a little bit of math that said has it changed? Have we gone left and right or up and down? And if we have, move the mouse, okay? Uh, and there's, so this will show you what, what you're moving. Um, and then I, I think they have one that moves the mouse in here. There's lots of examples on Adafruit's site that will turn it into a mouse. I think Chris Young posted a link to it on the actual, uh, on this actual post right here. Yeah, make it a mouse. Um, so there's certainly, you know, examples here. This is using make code. You can certainly use make code in, as well. Uh, but here in CircuitPython, all you've got to do is say, I'm going to use the CPX. Um, this is using the, the buttons on it as the left and right mouse buttons. Uh, and then to move the mouse cursor, you just say, get the X, Y, and Z. Where is this? This is... Um, yeah, this one's not using the accelerometer. But you certainly can, and we can we can certainly show you how to do that. But it's basically you're going to read the X, Y, and Z. You're going to tell it instead of printing out the number that you want it to move the mouse. Um, we can certainly make a guide for that for you if you need one. Uh, we are working on guides for all of the things that I made for the XAC, uh, and there's a problem with that. So might as well talk through that. Um, we've been waiting for a, a patch or an update from Microsoft. The, and we, we've decided not to wait for that any anymore. So um, we're going to go ahead and make a version of CircuitPython that is specific to the XAC. 
So I'm working with Dan Halbert from uh, Adafruit about getting that out. And uh, that is actually what I was doing today. So I happened to have this out and I was testing it. Um, and uh, so it made it awfully easy for me to make a quick video. I hope that, uh, I hope that helps. Um, all right, so Chris Young says that link that I posted did not use an accelerometer, but it could be easily adapted. Yep, I agree. And then uh, you know, Ed, if, if you have questions, you know, ask here. Um, Chris has done this. I have done this. Um, I believe uh, I believe Todd Ifaw has has done this. Uh, we have lots of folks who have gone through this and can help you with it. Also, I saw that you were on Discord. That's a fantastic place to get support for uh, for CircuitPython as well. So hopefully this helps. Um, I, I thought it'd be easier to make a quick video than to try and type this up. Um, and uh, I, I, hope, I hope this answered your questions. Uh, I will post a link to this back on your thread so that you see it. If you have any other questions, let us know. Uh, otherwise, you guys have a great Tuesday. It's a gorgeous day here. I may actually get outside and go fishing. But uh, I'll see you all later. Bye.